right. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Can you believe we've been doing this for two years? I know. We it's should count time. how many grant chats way. we've done. Have we done 200 grant chats? I mean, because we did a couple, like a bunch in a row well, before we figured no, out our No, we wouldn't have done... We wouldn't have done 200. Well, we Even if have we did it every week, we would have done 100. And I, no, I know oh, we would have done 100. 100 and That's right. Four. <laughs> Where's my math? Well, we should see when the 100th one is. If it's this one or a different one, we should count them. Hey, look, Cassie's right, here. Because we skipped some bottom. Oh, fun. Yeah, so I am using I see multiple. Kayla's here. <laughs> yes, it does take a lot of uh, bravery. Now, if I fall off the treadmill desk today, people are going to see me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just me listening and laughing. Oh, where'd Diane go? Hey, I see Olivia here. Oh, I see, and look, and we've got Charlie and Judy. I'm waving to them. Hello, guys. <laughs> this is we're going to remember to monitor both chats. We'll see how chatty all of us can be today. It is hard. Oh well, thank you, Bethany, for retweeting our picture. That was very good. I know I'm I'm over overwhelmed. This is why we have a community, Diane, isn't it? Because they help. Yes, it they is. Get things going, and Bethany's been just crazy out there doing all sorts of promoting for Grant Chat on many different platforms, not just Twitter. So we really, really appreciate her for doing that. Why, look, Gala is on the chat chat. Why, well, hello. Maybe that's what Diane was saying earlier. I'm just not paying attention to both. Maybe that is what Diane was saying. <laughs> oh, I guess Diane has the brain today. Oh, my goodness. So for those of you, uh, Gayla, hey, Charlie's here too, and Judy. Judy too. Wow, welcome. So for those of you who have never seen it, this <laughs> is the headset that my Linky Party group laughs about. Now in our last chat, I tried to make it a little more professional. Um, I can turn the glowing on and off, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet, and everybody's voted to keep it on <laughs> in our last Linky Parties, but um, hopefully I'll do something about it to look a little more professional next time. I don't know. It's celebratory. There we go. It's my <laughs> my way of celebrating. <laughs> and as you'll notice, Diane is bouncing up and down. She is walking away. She's cruising, getting her exercise. So she's chatting. She's hanging out here. And um, she is also walking. Why? Here's Amanda. Amanda saying hello. We have so many great people. This is not as easy as I'd like it to be. We'll get better at it. I have two computers going right now, so and a and a couple of three screens. Oh, Kim's here. Nice. And I'm sure Kim's like me, and I've just got a bunch of federal stuff happening. This is a welcome break from the big, big narrative that is keeping all my moments occupied right now. I hear you. I go out a big... to lunch with friends. Oh, cute headphones. Cat just ungracefully fell off my computer. <laughs> Don't you love those kind of distractions, <laughs> things that happen? And that's that's the funny thing. We're like, well, do we really want people to know the kinds of things that happen, like the cat falling off, my dog asking to leave, the UPS guy coming and barking. All this kind of stuff happens during Grant Chat, and you usually don't get to see it. We try to cover up, but here we are live. We'll see what happens today. And as Diane said, she hopes that um, she doesn't fall off of her treadmill desk. Um, so our first question. Oh, somebody today, call nine one one. You'll have a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, checking question. 
Our check-in question is, when was your first grant chat? Have you been here the full two years? Did you just start a year ago? Uh, is this your first chat? How fun would that be? Um, and how has grant chat impacted your work and your life? I'm answering live today, too, because, you know, that's how I roll. Ooh, you are crazy brave then. At least I've got my answers buffered. That's what I, I did till the wee hours last night. Spent some quality time with buffer. Oh, Joe, now I've got to look at my calendar and remember, I don't know if I, I can go all the way back to 2013 because we did our two pilot chats. You're going to tell me live on the air, what were the day of our, because remember we were like evening, afternoon, lunchtime, March 12th, was that our evening one when we were brave and we, we chatted late? Yes, and you know what? I will tell you, Gala was on that first chat. She was. Oh my God, I didn't yeah. remember that. I know. that. Yeah. Oh, hey, Gayla. we should have sent her like a party hit. Hey. Been around a while. Can't imagine life without it. Oh, love the connections. That's what Gayla just said on her chat box. Thank you. Oh. We love you, Gayla. We love you very, very much. We're so thankful for your support over the years. I can't believe you joined us on the first one. We didn't know if anyone would show up or even be interested. And you stuck with us all this time. Yay. You are a Grant Chat ambassador. So Bethany's not sure when her first chat was. Sometime in the middle of 2014, she loves the community, the knowledge, the resources. Becky feels like she's been here forever, but realistically, probably five or six months. Is that all? Seems like she's been here forever to me, too. Certainly been a huge in helping her not feel alone. Oh, that's nice. I need to move my screen over so I can see all of this. Six to nine months ago, Ruth, um, been become an important part of her week. Well, you're an important part of our week. Fantastic. You know, I, I just love seeing all these friendly faces every week. I told you early on, I'm like, this feels like going out to lunch with friends. It's such an awesome break. But I truly, I, <laughs> do you remember what happens when we sometimes meet our Twitter people? in person and they're slow running and open arms. It's so fun to take uh, the Twitter connection into real life, into IRL. Yes, and do you remember the first time we met in person? Now, a lot of people don't know the story. One of our grant chatters does. Uh, I know Diane, uh, Deb Cook was there. Um, the first time that Diane and I met face to face, we worked together for, what, a year before we ever, like, Oh, more than that. Almost like a year and a half. <laughs> Before we forever. slow motion ran into each other's arms, <laughs> gave each other a hug, and they, they were saying, oh, it's wonderful to see you two together. We're like, yeah, this is our first time. <laughs> and so those virtual relationships, <laughs> as much as people say it's shallow and everything, it's not. You know, relationships are what you make them, whether they're in person or online, and, and you can have them be as deep or as shallow as you want, and Diane and I definitely are proof of that. Not that we're shallow. <laughs> we have a very, very deep and great relationship. Um. So Charlie says that uh, she can't remember the last, oh, I mean her first grant chat, her last one is this one. Not her last, last one, most recent. Uh, and the impact in the short period of time has been mighty, mighty grant chat. Fantastic. I love and our no, community. I think, you know, the other thing that's fun about our community is that now that people in my real life understand what a Twitter chat is and what it means and the benefit, and it's, I think it's opened some really interesting dialogue for other people, too. It has. That's a, that's a really great, and you know, over the years, not only has social media changed, um, you know, and it changed just so rapidly, but the grant, you know, Grants in general has changed, and so have all of the grantors and grantees. You know, they're all getting more savvy about being online and about adapting to different platforms, social media platforms, which we've talked about in some of our webinars. Um, 
and so it's been fun to kind of grow, to grow with that, to be able to adapt as all those changes came out. So we have our grant chat, question number one. Yeah. What are your pressing concerns or questions about client management? Now Diane and I are going to have a webinar on Thursday where we go dig deeper into client management, and that's what we do, grant chat. We chat about it on Tuesday, and on Thursday we go deeper into the topic on Thursday. So uh, uh, on our on our webinar, so you're welcome to join those uh, webinars. There are Smarty Grants Blueprints webinars. Yep. Look, there's all this great retweeting of the question. I really like that North Star new logo. It's really Thank a nice you. logo for Minnesota. Kudos to them again. Minnesota, thanks you for your support. <laughs> So you know what would be interesting? Is there hmm. a Twitter tool that we could look at to see all the different folks that have been part of the chat over the two years? Is there well, a way yes, to grab? There is. I have. No, I'm I asking. Have, I'm like, uh, I don't know. Yes, yes, there is, and I've I've done it in the past, and I actually pull uh, some of those over with our um, if this then that, and oh, Mark's here. Hi, Hi Mark. Busyness. I like the word. Well, I think we've, and Mike's joined us on the chat too. Hi, Mike. See, my I think my chat on my other computer is a little slow. I don't see it. You are always like a step ahead. Again, you have the brain today, so that's good. I guess. <laughs> how, how to keep? How to keep? Becky says, "How do you keep clients on a timeline?" Nicely, <laughs> I'm adding the emphasis, but I'm sure it's there. We all know what that means. And she has the smiley face, so you know that really helps us understand what she's trying to communicate. I'm going to retweet that one. I think it's important. Dealing with a no, client. No, I just said with a spoonful of sugar. Remember how we talked about <laughs> That's right. Oh. That's right. Okay. Oh, bright and shiny object. Oh, that is, you know, and that's where you get that program drift when the clients are, oh, there's this grant, there's this grant, and they're trying to push you in different directions instead of following your grant strategy. So really setting that, um, I'm going to retweet hers. That's all I'm doing today. I'm just going to retweet. Um, <laughs> setting yeah. those, those parameters for the client <laughs> ahead of time is, is pro probably the, what didn't you say that's the biggest part of client management is to really set those, those boundaries up ahead of time, have that strategy to begin with. Hey, Clay's here. Hello, oh, April of 14. He was a, Clay has been a great part of the community for a while. Yes, he has. I still am waiting for him, though, to invite all of us on his big excursion here coming up this summer. We said we were going to have a live grant chat there. On the road. That's right. We're going to Norway. Well, grant chat road trip. Yeah. Maybe grant chatters will offer to start hosting us so we can do grant chat lives from their office. So good to be back. Oh, you want to like post Judy's the link again here. To, to our um, chat and tell people if they want to get on the chat, they can? I will go back to it. Yes, ma'am. Very good. All see right. That go. Mike. Oh, I see Mike Scroll now. Down. Knowing when to say no, Judy says. Oh, that. I asked Diane. I'm not a no sayer. I say yes way, way too much. <laughs> and Diane says no. <laughs> Joe, <Maybe>. you say no. <laughs> she doesn't shake her finger at me. Well, I don't know. You know, we're not usually in a hangout. Maybe she is <laughs> shaking her finger at me. <laughs> Diane, do you shake your finger at me? I might <laughs> try to keep it intact. Uh, See, not only are do we have a good relationship, we have an honest one. <laughs> Come to Houston. Oh, Gayla has invited Grant Chat to Houston. Oh, Gayla, I think. Yes, please. It's warmer there now. Yes, let's go now. Now. It, it snowed here yesterday. Did it snow there? No, but it's supposed to on Friday. I might cry. Oh. 
I was I was not cool. Okay, so what tools do you use for your so client cool. management? Pros and cons. That's question two. It's out right now. You know, I had oh, I was actually I was I hope they don't mind if I say this, but I was talking to the Foundation Center the other day and. Uh, John Zella from Shinneman Foundation, we were talking about Foundation Chat, and they commented to me how they thought it's impressive that we managed to get 10 questions in. They said it seems so fast paced when we first joined, but I can't imagine it any other way. And I just, I, I marvel though at our, we really debated. Remember, we were like 5, 10, what's the right number? What can we, what can the community really hold? And I just, I think it's amazing to see the dialogue. Right. And, you know, I, for me, those five question ones, well, and you know how I like some of these really pa fast Twitter chats. The five question ones um, talk about shiny objects. <laughs> if if there's too much of a lull, it lo I, it loses my attention. I have too many other things to do. I want to be really engaged. I like the fast pace, but maybe the fast pace is too much for. Um, I know it's a lot when you first start, but I think as you get into it, you like the fast pace, and that's why we do the preview questions too, so people have can have their answers ready. Yeah. Foundation Chat does the preview questions too, don't they? Foundation Chat did. That's a pickup that he uh, he caught from Grant Chat. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I think they're trying to schedule another one, maybe even for April. So we'll have to keep our eyes peeled and see how that goes. Well, it seems like every time they um, have one, I'm traveling and I'm traveling in April. So sounds good. <laughs> All right. Oh, Asana Pros. You know, I, right then, doesn't. Kim says that she uses Asana Pro. Um, really flexible, and I know a lot of people have said that on this chat, that that's a tool that they use. Diane, have you used that tool? I haven't used it yet. Yeah. I haven't tried it, but because, and I know Kim really does uh, enjoy it. She'd also tried Basecamp, she said before, which was one that I had struggled with for the size mm -hmm. of my team versus the size of the product, and so I'm curious to know, because Kim's a small shop, too. Um, yeah, I think based on a recommendation, I'm probably going to try it out. That's what I, my tool list, like my to-do list of things to check out after Grant Chat, it always makes my to-do list for the week double. I, swear. I have all these tabs open and stuff happening after I see the recommendation. Excuse me, I sniffled. Yeah, I haven't tried to sign it. You know, it's a great point that um, the a lot of the tools are for bigger clients. Bigger, you know, if, if you're managing some really large clients or grants. And my client, uh, my client load and what I'm doing goes up and down during the year. So... Basecamp may be great for a three-month period for a client that has a large federal grant. We have a lot of folks uh, participating. But then the rest of the year, I may just have smaller projects and smaller teams and not really need it. So it, it is a balancing act. Dropbox and Google Docs from Gala. Yay, Julie's here. Julie Johnson's here. She's been here since the summer of 2014. Oh, summer. Let's think about summer fondly. The icebreaker is actually going to come through this week, which is the biggest sign of summers to come. What's that? Oh, look at that. We have a, an invitation to Kansas City anytime. We could take our... Take the Grant Chat show on the road there. Thanks, Mike. Oh, well, I actually just we had know a client email me today. Of course we know who that Mike is. I was like, exactly. Mike is. So for those of you on the uh, 
on the Hangout, Mike's CEO is uh, Mike Chamberlain of the Grant Professionals Association. He's our CEO as of January 2015, and we are so happy he's on board and happy he's joined the chat today. The phone works really well. <laughs> Excellent point. Excellent point. Um, <laughs> Followed by Clay's humor. <laughs> yes. So Kimberly says that uh, the phone works well to help manage your clients. And Clay, of course, with his sense of humor that we love, uh, says, oh, my goodness, the phone, not that. And we as grant professionals, I think I think there's, there's a point to that is that we get so stuck into our computer and into our work and stuff that sometimes we forget. Just pick up the phone. Sometimes email isn't enough and the tasks lists aren't enough it's that relationship building and really helping to build that person personal relationship that can get things done what do you think Diane I agree you say it so well I just need to say ditto <laughs> <laughs> no, you know. but um, I think it goes so you know when we talk about building relationships with funders and people are like what you want me to call? I should just email. I'm like, no, you can misinterpret all sorts of things. And yes. yeah, voice to voice, that's what it is. Got to go old school. And it's funny that the phone is old school. Isn't but, it? But, alas. So, question number three. Uh, I never yeah. thought I'd yeah. Never thought what? I was going to say, I never thought I'd be able to say as part of client management that texting with clients would be part Sorry. of the realm of what might be acceptable and professional who would have thought you know actually this last year I did more texting with clients that's a really great point I hadn't even thought about it it just naturally happened because instead of calling each other you know I know somebody's in a city council meeting and you know they're really trying to get approval for our work and for what they're going to do and and they ha they need something from me I don't have to call them. I can just text them. They have everything that they need right there when they need it. And I think that that's been a, a new addition that I didn't – that's a great point. So actually we're at question three here, which is with new clients, what is your approach to setting the scope for a project or application? Ooh. Well, I don't know. Diane, do you want an answer? Do you want me to give my rambling <laughs> answer? <laughs> Well, I think that um, part of what's so interesting is that, you know, last week we talked about the bidding process and how different it can be depending on who your client might be. So sometimes it might be that the scope is set for you and then you can negotiate a little bit based on best practices. And other times I find that clients come to us and they really aren't 100% sure what they want mm -hmm. or what they think they need. And so some of it's a little bit of scope finding and then sometimes, the not a game, but the process of putting forward what we think is best practice and the best approach and knowing that it might not match what other folks are saying in their bid. So, But then when you get to that actual, once you've got the award, oh, I think we've probably all been there trying to prevent scope creep or things and instead just keeping focused on best practices, right? Absolutely. So, you know, Gayla said that um, a logic model can happen. Can, can help. And I think, you know, a lot of this goes back to all of us know that we need to do that, but when we have clients, they hire us to be a grant writer. And our job is grant development. It really isn't just grant writing. Grant writing is a small part of that overall work that we do, and part of it is how do we get them ready for the grant? How do we develop the scope of our work and their work? I've told everyone before that one of the things I learned the hard way <laughs> was to build that scope into my proposal, and in that scope, I tell them my responsibilities, and I tell them their responsibilities because if they don't do what they need to do I can't do my job and vice versa so we have a partnership going into that that scope develops that partnership I answered that over and over again I can't remember. yeah uh, well no but and you're right and Charlie said the same thing including a detailed scope of service in the letter of agreement so at that very upfront point it prevents headache afterwards but sometimes it's tough to figure out what is the real capacity? You know, if all you're doing is having a phone conversation before you scope and quote, that can be pretty difficult to maybe get all the right answers to your questions. Clay said he uses a lot of question and answer. I think that's a great approach, but you've got to know what are some of the red flags or maybe mm -hmm. even kind of a red herring as you're mm -hmm. in that process. I like what Kim said. She's doing in-person interviews, site visits, 
site visits and assessments as a way to kind of, I think really what people are saying is they're trying to get a grant readiness. Um, you know how <laughs> you know how I love grant readiness, and so I think a lot of that determines your scope. Yes, yes. So we are on question four. This is going so fast, especially with the talking and the uh, <laughs> tweeting and everything else. So question four, how do you walk through roles and responsibilities in a scope with a client? I'm going to say again, and then Diane, I'm sure, has a lot to add to this. She does, she does a great job in developing her scopes with her clients and getting her clients on track. For me, again, setting that at the very beginning with the bid, letting them know what I expect so that the conversation doesn't start out with a surprise, that everybody knows, oh, <laughs> this particular consultant is going to require us to actually participate from the get-go. And I think setting that as a standard and as a, a part of what I do in my business to start out with really helps that conversation, that dialogue to happen without any surprises. Diane? Oh, yeah. I, I feel like I could write a book. Maybe I will one day. <laughs> um, I, yeah. Of course you will. I don't even know what else to say. I'm like... <laughs> It's such a tricky thing, and I find that um, it, yeah, it, it all comes back to founded the firm based on nonprofit capacity. So truly trying to customize a scope every time is. Tr I, I feel like the interview questions and the, the, what you're looking for is really it's gotten to be deeper, but it's almost a novel by itself by the time you're done to to have the right document. I don't absolutely, know. absolutely, and you know oh, if you look at what. Kim's got great questions too, though. Look at this. This is, <laughs> this is why I'm so glad she joined. I knew her from a, a Facebook yeah. group for nonprofit consultants and encouraged her to come over here as well. And because she just, it's simple but so true. Ask clients how they like to work: email, phone, in person, text, like we just talked about. Um, what a simple but amazing solution, right? Absolutely. I think sometimes we forget that and thinking about well, the big stuff. And again, in the in the contracts, ask them. You know, tell them I require cloud-based management systems. What tools do you use? Are you most comfortable with? Which ones are you willing to learn? And create a list. That's one of the things I do. Do you use Google Docs? Would you be willing to use Google Docs? Do you use Dropbox? Are you willing to use Dropbox? Do you have other cloud-based tools that you'd like me to use that you're already using? A lot of them aren't using cloud-based tools, unfortunately, of my clients. And so part of my role is to teach them how to use it. And again, that builds internal capacity. It helps them communicate with their partners. They can really see how these kinds of tools can can solve problems and can make things move much quicker and document everything. You said it better yeah, than I could, I Ruth, Ruth actually. Says, to you, Diane. Well, what'd she say? She said you said it better than I could. Oh. So she got a ditto oh, in that's there. that's kind. <laughs> organizational. Oh, she got a favorite for me. So Gayla says an organizational um, assessment is part of the process. Absolutely. Oh, I just saw what Judy said. Client email, phone, text, horror story. After all the attempted contacts at grant, dial grant deadline, client said no answer means I agree. <gasps> I audibly gasped when I just read that. Oh, my oh heavens. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. Oh, I mean, we. I think honestly, we all have stories like that. Not me. I'm but, perfect. Oh, my heart. <laughs> Sometimes we put, we get our blinders. Um, we don't ask the right question necessarily to get the answer. How would you think to ask that? In terms of how they provide feedback, it would take some very targeted questioning, I think, to get there. Wow. Yeah, I. You know, again. I guess I would I would say I need an answer, um, but but nobody would expect that. Nobody would expect. <laughs> so uh, you know, yeah. I mean, hindsight, we can all say, oh, I would have done this, but 
Judy, whatever you did was probably absolutely right. It was the client that wasn't communicating. And but how would you know that ahead of time? And now we've you've taught us all a lesson that if we're not hearing back, ask them if that's you know if they can please give you a yes or no. Question five. Yeah, and I was just going to say I've actually. Oh, question five. Goodness, it's flying. I know. Halfway through, what document sharing say, tool do you use with your clients? What do you like or struggle with for those tools? Ooh. Well, I think we've shared a bunch on here. Uh, Dropbox. Uh, we love uh, mm -hmm. Google Drive. Um, we love. Google Drive. We'd be lost without it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I've just started um, using more of my OneDrive because I filled up my Dropbox. <laughs> I've got to move some things over. So um, I think that's, but for client management, uh, you know, for me, we do our editing and everything in Google Drive because you can have that co-editing. And for those of you that haven't used Google Drive before, if you're using a Google Doc, you can have 5, 10, 20 people in the same document at the same time, which may sound chaotic, but it's not. At the same time, looking at what you're writing, making edits, making comments, it saves everything. You don't have to do track changes. You can go back and look and undo things or look at things. It is a phenomenal tool and um, one that if you aren't using it yet, you really should for grant editing and, and collaborations. Right, Diane? Yeah, well, that's what I have. Yeah, the federal ones that I'm working on right now. My goodness, we've got the logic model, work plan, and narrative all open. And actually, my internal SF-424, like, check spreadsheet, everything's open in there. And we've got folks, the evaluators in California. I'm here, the client somewhere else. I mean, how else, different time zones, different places, we'd have so many email attachments going in different versions. Oh, it gives me the chills to think about how we used to do it. Oh. And the mistakes that were made because of it. The honest well, mistakes, brings, probably. Yeah. Gala brings up a good point that many of our team members aren't comfortable. And you know, Diane, I, I don't know about you, but for me, for the last maybe, so I've been using GoToMeeting since 2003. Can you believe it's been around that long? And when I first introduced my clients to GoToMeeting, um, you know, that we could do this kind of thing uh, online. They were shocked and very thankful, and there were a lot of glitches, uh, but we were able to use it. And we used Adobe Connect for a while because for government agencies, there's a lot of security problems with all the other ones. Um, and now, you know, we, we use Hangouts, we use a, a variety of different tools to connect face-to-face -face and to do our work online. And what I found in the last few years is that um, my clients not only are, even if they're uncomfortable, this is the last thing that's kind of pushed them in that direction. I say, I'll take care of it. I'll set it all up for you. I'll make sure all you have to do is start using it. And then later on, you can be the expert for your team. And that helps them get over that fear factor, that technology fear factor, and to say, okay, it's time. But yeah. some of that is me just saying, I'll take care of it. I'm comfortable in it. And the other part of it is that the world has changed and they know they have to change with it. So now it's not as difficult uh, to move forward, uh, I think, with our clients. So Kim uses mostly email. Yeah. Oh, Alyssa's here too. So glad to see her. She's another one that's popped in and out over our two years. She's been a Absolutely. grant chatter for a while. Yeah, and I think, you know, I mean, there's one thing to be said for client preference, but as soon as you start to talk about some of the benefits in terms of live editing for some of the more, uh, I mean, it can be helpful with some, like, small letters of inquiry and the like, but as soon as you start to share some of the benefits for how it'll improve their process, mm -hmm. save them time, if, like you said, if we're willing to do a little bit of that setup work, make sure there's a folder, give everybody the right access, assure them that, you know, the salary information in the budget will only be available to two or three people from the team versus for, to everybody. Um, I think setting that, setting their minds at ease definitely helps. That's a great point. And I will tell you, I don't, I don't know how many federal grants folks do, but for me, you know, you have to package the, um, all the documents into PDFs and zip them and then put all of those into another PDF. It's very, you know, 
and then you have to have them all numbered and they have to be named a certain way and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, that part of it usually takes the last four days of the grant, just getting it packaged. Um, with uh, Google Drive, once we move everything over to uh, a Word doc and get that formatted um, for the narrative and we start moving other things over, I put those into a Dropbox and then we have a final folder that has all of our final documents that we can quickly update. So I'll give you an example. We had a uh, federal grant. We had some, uh, somebody found an error that affected many different documents. We had it all ready to package and zip and put away. I could go in from where I was. My client was in Vermont. Uh, I could go in from where I, I was, make all the changes live. They could see it update just like that. And then they knew that it was done. They could submit the grant without a lot of you know, emailing back and forth, having the wrong one, the same document was changed. It, we didn't have to change the name of the document or create a new document and email and rename it. The final version was just changed and it was clear, good to go. Did anyone see a post from Dropbox that they'll be allowing multi-access to files akin to Google Drive? Yes, I did, Becky, and I was very excited about that. Ooh, I didn't see that. That will be exciting because Dropbox, same like you just said, it's where the grant stock of PDF lives, but that's about it because that's, oh, that'll make our PowerPoint work so much better. I'm so excited. Yay. <laughs> uh, uh, I just made my afternoon. Oh, yay. And look, happy anniversary from Dropbox. <laughs> just for you. <laughs> that's great. Yes, email attachment overload. Ruth Ann brings us up and Diane agrees and I'm sure we have a resounding groan <laughs> across all the grant chat, which is that emailing the attachments back and forth and renaming them is an overload. And again, that's where mistakes can happen and mistakes, mistakes can cost us grants. They mean that, you know, eight weeks worth of work is gone and people's jobs are gone. So don't use email. No. <laughs> if you have to, you have to, especially for some of the smaller grants, it's fine. My federal grants, that's where I, I really um, push back on that, on, on emailing documents. Yeah. Now, you guys all know that I used to use Widgeo uh, for it, and I'm really hoping that something else comes out like Widgeo. I mean, Widgeo is still there. I know that they're updating it because they're using it in the university system, and hopefully they'll come out with a new tool, but that was a great tool for, for project management, um, and especially for my grant management, but uh, uh, I'm not using it right now, but I expect that they'll come out with uh, something. They're, they've renamed it. Uh, but the company that's doing the software uh, hopefully will have something new. I'd like them to make a grant specific one and I'll market it. <laughs> It'll be a grant chat special. You heard it here first. <laughs> they don't even know. <laughs> All right. I know it's interesting to me though when we think and look at our community, a lot of us really like technology, but it sounds, and I, I know you and I are different in terms of where we adopt our technology. Are we early adopters, mid adopters? I always think of you as our early adopter, and I listen to you to tell me what new tools you're trying and in love with, and then I wait to see what you say a week or two later, and then I download accordingly. <laughs> Good point. Excellent. Testing is important, and apparently I'm the guinea pig. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I do. I love tools. I love trying new tools. I love to find out what works, and then I love to, don't love to find out what doesn't work, but it's really helpful to, to find out. Here are the pros and cons. So like our Dropbox Google Drive issue, we know the pros and cons of both, and we use the pros to our advantage, and we try and help educate everyone about the cons. You know, the cons for Google Drive is formatting for the Google Docs and for the spreadsheets. They're not a format that our grant partners accept, and when we change them over to the right formats, we lose all the formatting of, of the document. So, hey, Danny's here. He's on question three, but he's here. <laughs> he's just retweeted question three. <laughs> Why, hello, Danny. Listen, to go from helping to found International Grant Professionals Week, having his first Twitter handle, 
what, created two, three weeks ago? Yeah. Light years ahead, and now he's in Grant Chat. This is awesome. Welcome aboard. Oh, we have question seven. Yeah. Question seven is for those of you with employees or subcontractors, do you have them interface with your clients? Why or why not? Ooh. Oh, sorry for the face. <laughs> Can you tell I wrote this question? <laughs> I had a lot of fun drafting this week's preview questions. I was like, I hope Joe's okay with what they say this week. Hey, when I buffered them, I was oh, like, oh, so I can't even think about it. Well, and some there's so many of these. Actually, everything this month, there hasn't necessarily been a right or wrong. And part of why no. I personally had so much fun with the Grant Consulting 101 theme was that you and I have worked together for over two years. And some of these dialogues that came from creating the questions or creating our PowerPoint for Smarty Rants, we had never had. And so this open dialogue, it, it just I love it when it highlights that there's more than one right model. As long as we're within our ethical practices, which we always are, within, you know what I'm saying? Like it just, oh, I've loved it. It's just, it's felt so refreshing to have these dialogues. It has, and I think it's also, you know, so FYI, Diane and I are doing these webinars every Thursday, and so we have these conversations about, well, what are we actually going to say? You know, answering questions on Twitter, that's one thing, but when we're doing a presentation and talking about best practices, what if we have differences? What message is that? And the message is that there are different ways to go about it, but, but like Diane said, it's discovering, you know, that, okay, why, so why are you doing it that way? This is me. <laughs> Hearing Diane, what, Joe? What are you doing? <laughs> Why do you do it that way? <laughs> and I, well, here's what happened. So when I explain, here's what, here's the terrible trauma I went through. <laughs> to get to this point. Here's why, you know, I have this boundary or why I say this. And and then it makes more sense. But it, it's been fun to have th those discovery sessions. Well, Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, and because our, our trauma stories are thankfully different, we actually, by having the open dialogues, and I think actually then seeing what other, like Judy's story about what happened with her client and that communication piece, her sharing that just now on the chat will forever stick with me and probably impact the way I communicate with any new client, especially if I start to see that there's no communication. We're helping everybody else avoid some of our uh-ohs because we all have them. And it's not a, you know, a bad, but I just, that to me, oh, the value from that dialogue is phenomenal. So Ruth Ann sets up, is it Ruth Ann or is it Gayla? I, I think it's Ruth Ann sets up, um, a Dropbox account for each client. She doesn't pay. That's really interesting. That's a that's a neat uh, way to go about it. And maybe that helps them. Different way to do it. Yeah. So I'm because sorry, then they have the capacity. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great idea. I'll have to write that down in my tips. So one of the um, where was that? So Kim and Diane, I think, uh, both said similar things, which is that that for our clients, and I same thing with me, that we let our clients know who's on their team because we have different people on different teams and on different grants. We let people know who's on their team, who has access to their information, and what information they will have access to. And I don't know about you, Diane, but with my government contract, I have to submit um, the subcontractor's business information, their insurance information, so they, they know who's on there. As far as security goes, we have... Um, confidentiality agreements with all of our subcontractors and mm -hmm. our client sees that uh, confidentiality agreement as well. Yeah, and it's there's such a difference between the type of client and what level of disclosure is required versus what I think a lot of us have explained today. It feels like the right way to handle it because in a lot of ways, you know, having that subcontractor team, it's about bringing the experience and diversifying the opinions that are helping the client so it creates a stronger product in a lot of senses. Um, and so it's to the value for the client to understand what's happening, who's helping them, the expertise, and to also put their mind at ease. Who has what level of experience? Who ultimately is in charge? Who can see my documents or who can't? Um, I think transparency is always the best answer in anything client management related. Absolutely. And so even if not forced, like in your larger federal ones, you, you shared your contract clause last week about that insurance requirement and how they each had to carry individually their same but own coverage of a policy versus 
in a lot of ours, our E&O insurance covers our subcontractors as an umbrella, and that's okay with our clients versus a lot of the cities and municipals that require that separate coverage. So, so many variations. And that's the thing, you have to be adaptable. You have to understand that there are these variations mm -hmm. and be set up to be able to take on those variations and have your team ready for it too and say, you know, this this client, more than likely you're going to have to have insurance, get, you know, talk to your broker. If you want to be part of this project, you're going to need to talk to your broker and be able to get the certificate for this client. Question eight is out. Um, how do you support and integrate with eternal teams that support grant applications and related work? I love. It. I had fun with this question, question too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's t it's always tough to be the outsider coming in. So one of those interview questions: What does your internal capacity look like? Right? Who do you have on staff? What roles? Who's helping with these hats of grant submission? Who's going to be on the grant team that you're leading or co-facilitating? Um, seen some, di you know, very interesting arrangements within different client organizations. So knowing that so that you can set yourself and the client up for success is it's really important. It's a big part of that initial conversation, I think, as you're trying to scope so you understand your role and how you might in What do you think, Joe? What have you found? Ah, well, you know, like you said, every client is different. So depending on their personalities, uh, I try to do a lot of questions at the beginning to figure out what type of conversations they want to have, how in charge. Sometimes a client wants to be in charge or feel like they're in charge and sometimes um, they want me to just kind of take over and, and be fully in charge and there are red flags for both. Um, neither way is the best way. Um, we want it to be more of a we're a team. We both are taking leadership. Uh, so I try to facilitate that um, idea that make sure that that's the seed that's planted that we are a team and we're both going to lead. I have areas that I'm going to have expertise in. They have areas that they're going to have expertise and we both need to combine those leadership skills. So first of all there's that and then there's for my internal team um, I think that making sure that they have access like you said to um, the documents that again that's where that Google Drive comes in they can see what the client is doing they can see what we're doing they can look at you know what's happening with our meeting notes and such but they, um, they uh, a bunch of uh, things that we're doing, multiple, uh, <laughs> multiple. Uh, see, now ruin. Now the compliment makes it so I can't do my multiple tweeting tasking. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, <anyway>. I. <laughs> There's like. So yeah. Mike, uh, that's very kind of you, Mike. The, the GPA CEO has just said he's impressed with my multitasking, chatting, treadmill desk, grand chat. And I'm, I'm only not allowed standing. to multitask I'm my... anymore. This is the one exception. I'm not biking. I'm only standing. There's no way I could do the biking, so I don't know how you do the walking. I, I haven't tried the treadmill desk yet, just the standing. So, yeah. Um, yay, Diane. Such an inspiration. How many people have got treadmill desk because of Diane? I mean, really. <laughs> You're um, saving we life. know that Mickey Vandaloo for my team. Yeah, her, they built one for her uh, after we saw the design that my husband did, and some other folks have talked about it. Actually, Beth oh, Cantor um, posted a blog that I wrote about it, and I know it was so it was fun to have her here. One of our um, original members. Thank you, Gayla. Yeah. We love you. Oh, wow. So Ruthann says that affiliates <laughs> are less upset <laughs> oh, with... Oh, is so kind. What'd she say? She said that I... Good questions. I need to start on that book. Well, maybe. <laughs> Absolutely. The one. Try any tool and always respond. Hmm. I always like it when sometimes some of these comments make me stop and think. And I'm like, wait a second, I missed some of the t conversation. Now I've got to scroll all the way down through T chat and find what I missed. <laughs> That's what I just did too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, I like Mark's comment. This idea of connecting the dots. Plenty of white space. We have markers and erasers ready. Excellent. I like his hashtag, Transformation Tuesday. Oh! Isn't that nice? So, hey, question who's nine. Who's here? Dave! Yeah, but look who popped in. Our buddy Dave! Is he actually on the chat chat? For some reason, mine isn't scrolling. Uh, he's on just regular chat. I didn't check out on the Hangout yet. Yeah, our buddy Dave's there. So, question nine is out. Can you believe it? Most clients are great, but we all have had at least one tricky client. Just one. How do you handle those situations? <laughs> Just one. Depends on how tricky they are. Oh, Judy, I think you'd get used to it. Although I did, I had to have some work done um, in the office, and so I had a contractor come in during the work day to take care of the repair that needed to be done. And they, I was actually sitting at the real desk, and they walked in, and they looked at me, and they looked at the treadmill desk, and they said, do you run on that while you type? I said, no, no, silly, I walk on it. I'm only at 2-4. And so then when they came back with the part that they were going to repair later, I was actually on it, writing a narrative. And they're like... Oh, how do you do that? And it's, anyway, it is such a point of conversation. Thanks, Judy. You wouldn't break your neck, though. <laughs> I have faith. Oh, you yeah. know, Ruth Ann, I mean, Ruth brings up a really good point. Uh, she says she's beginning to think that mm -hmm. she's attracted to difficult clients. And, you know, from my experience, and Diane, maybe you, maybe you have the same. Uh, I know that others have, that especially when you're first um, starting out, um, you can be attracted to difficult clients and the reason being is that um, those red flags, you're not as aware of those red flags. Um, we're, we're just as a, attractive to or attracting uh, for difficult clients but we know when to say, oh, it's, this, this one's going to be too much trouble. Not that we don't still have difficulties but we have fewer of them because we know the red flags. And so each client is a lesson and hopefully our grant consulting group um, training programs will help people mm -hmm. uh, talk about it, talk about their clients, learn from each other's lessons, learn from our lessons and really be able to identify those red flags that help you say no to the clients that are not going to be productive, they're not going to get the grants, um, but to be able to focus on the ones that can get the grants and that are really going to build your business and are going to build their own missions. So that's a really great point and one I think that we all have struggled with, especially as we were starting out. Are there any clients that aren't? Yeah, tricky? and I think, well, and having a definition of what your perfect client is too I think helps and it's not that they're not going to be a challenge to work with but in my case what does that mean for grant readiness or in your case Joe are they really going to be competitive in that particular line item um, and then if they're not the perfect client for our project thinking about how you can build their capacity in a different way to get them to the point where then you define them as a perfect client I think that's an opportunity for yourself and for your client Absolutely. That's a great point. That's, again, what we come back to, you know, use Diane's grant readiness tool. Uh, I think we all have some grant readiness tools. We'll have more um, available as the year goes on from, from Smarty Grants, more tools for you, but really evaluate where the client's at. Are they grant ready? And those tricky clients are usually the ones that aren't grant ready. And you have to get them there. They're not ready to compete. They're not ready for the Olympics of grants. You know, they just, they need to get some training in, they need some coaching, they need some development to be at that point. And maybe that means that they join another team, that they join somebody else who is good at grants and that they are a sub-grantee to get their feet wet. Oh, that's actually, that's a fantastic point. I had that conversation with a colleague just yesterday. When somebody's not the best lead applicant, can you get them to understand that they want to be a sub can you get them to want to approach a partner and start that dialogue? That's not as common as I would hope, but it's such a great, yeah. Ditto, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Kim. Kim says it all right here. Okay, and I couldn't reply with a great, but I retweeted it. There are no tricky clients. Mm -hmm. People go where systems lead them. That that 
that says exactly what I was trying to say, exactly what, it, just a more succinct and, and uh, incredible way. That's fantastic. Look for internal and external systems that do not lead to optimal results. Brilliant. I, that has got to go in the blog. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's it. Yes. That, that's the money. Right Note there. to self. Done. Yes. Yeah. Question 10 is out. Oh, we're on our last question. Can you believe it? So what advice would you give to new consultants about client management? Oh, great. Uh, just a second. My son just arrived. Of course, he knows it's grand chat time. Bye-bye. Hold on. Real world. And then you were left with just Diane. Hopefully nothing happens to me on the treadmill desk while she's gone. This hour always goes so fast. It's so much fun. We're so glad that everybody's with us today. It's so hard to believe that two years has flown by. I'm almost done. I'm back. <laughs> like it's grant chat time. What are you doing? So. Whew. The real oh, world of having children with spring breaks. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. This is our real world. That's going to be me next week during Grant Check because our spring break is a week later. Married a behaviorist. Nice. So Cassie says that she married a behaviorist and it helps her train clients. And that's really part of our business is training clients. What works for one client might not work for another. <laughs> or building their capacity. Yeah. Communication is key. Oh, there we go. And Kim is on task today. I like her point here. Our job is to work with them, not against them. Signed agreement. He gets a BAM for that one. Hey, if you ever earn a oh, BAM wow. on Grant Chat. Oh, don't chat, come out of reach chat. Uh-uh. No. No. You have done something. What's going on with my hair? You've done something special if you have uh, earned a BAM. So, Diane. Yep, you saved those for the best. I yeah. And, and unfortunately, if your tweet is too long and I'm doing three screens at once. It's hard for me to edit. <laughs> edit. Clay favorited my BAM. Um, it's hard for me to edit and give a BAM if your tweet is too long. So just if you want a BAM and you think you're BAM worthy, <laughs> just make sure you give me um, however many characters the length of your name is plus the four characters for the BAM and the space. And if there's an extra space in that, leave me room for an exclamation point. <laughs> you get a BAM and an exclamation point. I mean, really. It doesn't get any better than that. There we go. All right. Does it come back to roles and responsibilities? Yes. Yes, it does. Diane, I don't know if you can see me if I'm moving, but you're not moving anymore. <laughs> Kimberly says sometimes she's in the need of um, behavior modification. We all do. We all get frustrated, especially when we have a huge deadline. We need to watch our ourselves and watch our own behaviors and, and know that we're not perfect either. Are 
Oh, you're back. The real life of Grant Chat when you forget to plug your power cord in and you don't get a reminder that you've got 10% of battery left. Does that sound familiar? Have we it's, had this experience sounds, before? Uh, yeah. Just, and I just made it. That was my mistake. That was well. You know, again, another road, I a path I broached for you, because <laughs> I, I did that first. I did that over a webinar uh, that I was hosting. So, where did the hour go exactly, Clay? Where did it go? That so, was so much fun. It was fun. It was nice. A little challenging. I don't think we were retweeting um, from all of our handles as much as we normally would. So we'll have to go back and catch some of those great <laughs> comments. This Julie, did take a Julie, lot of multitasking. Julie says, "Did Diane fall?" <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> She's good. Hang up the 911. Great. So now if you could see, Ooh. you know, kind of the background. We have dogs barking, we have children around, we have um, technical difficulties, we have multitasking, we have a lot of fun seeing our community when they arrive. That's a little bit of a background of what we've been doing the last two years. Uh, great chat. Thank you, yes, Kim. So Thank you, Ruth Ann. Ruth, why do I keep calling her Ruth Ann? Olivia, gotta go. Continue to celebrate. Thank you. Happy anniversary to our Grant Chat community. You know, it's not just about Diane and I. We enjoy uh, hosting it. We're very happy to facilitate the community itself. But what's, I think, most exciting for us is when we see two of our community members really connect. And when we hear about them working on projects together or reaching out to one another to say, now you mentioned this tool that you have. Tell me more. Okay, I'll talk to you offline. Or when we see them even interact on um, LinkedIn or other communities that we're at that we know where they met and that they're taking that relationship further. And, of course, when we're all at the Grant Professional Association conferences. And uh, like you said, at Diane, at the beginning, I almost said the beginning of the show. Apparently now we have a show. <laughs> That uh, at the beginning, uh, we talked about how we love seeing our Grant Chat community members running into each other's arms, seeing each other in person, face to face for that first time at the conferences. We love that. Diane? Exactly. Yes. Oh. I'm all giddy. So much fun. Two years. Well, yes. Yeah. So it was very difficult to manage three screens, uh, um, and uh, four different applications going at once, but uh, but it worked. It did work, and oh, that's kind. Julie said, "Thank you for the humor-laced multitasking." Our humor is quirky humor for sure. Uh oh, but we Diane. have fun. That's, that's the important part. <laughs> <laughs> we did have fun. Well, and part of it was to show right you. Here. No, no, I think it just came up after you left um, for a brief second. But I think it is, it is to show people that, yeah, we're, we're real people. And, um, you know, at some point in time, maybe we'll do uh, this is a webinar that uses Google Hangout. But maybe at some point in time, we'll have Google Hangout. And we, like when we have our next guest. Well, we can use this tool, but maybe we could have a Hangout where we can have more people, you know, kind of across the bottom, and they don't have to register. They can just pop in and out. Um, but that takes a lot well, of we've talked about our grant chat happy hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our Would anybody chat be happy in hour. the grant chat happy hour? We're thinking about it where we actually do a Hangout, and you guys can all just talk live like this. We'll have to see. Let uh, us know if you're interested. Well, I think cool. we have some interest. Well, Diane, oh, is it is it over? It's been real. It I think it's over. I think it's time for another cup of coffee. Oh, but wait, this is a great one to leave on. Liz says, I love how there is such a focus on cultivating relationships at all levels of grant work. Grant chat is a big part of my learning curve. Doesn't that say it oh. all? That does. Well, Grant Bring Chat it. love and Grant Chat hugs. <laughs> Bring it in. Arms in. 
I know. Hashtag, I'm a hugger because of Joe. <laughs> That's right. So thank you all for joining oh. us. Um, we promise to get a little everybody. more professional, maybe not. Thank you. Bye. See you later, Diane. I forgot which screen I'm monitoring.